another week rolls to an end, and we're back here, enjoying a bit of tipple, trying to fix the world, and talking about things that we have no business talking about. As usual, if you think we know anything that we to- we know anything about what we're talking about, you probably ought to have your head examined. What are we having today? Maybe before we start, I notice you've shaved. Yes. What's the occasion? Well, it's November. So, you know, everybody knows that October is, is uh, mm-hmm. Breast Cancer Month. And a lot of men actually uh, commemorate Breast Cancer Month. But okay. most people don't know that uh, November is Prostate Cancer Month. So, uh, a lot of men grow beards and moustaches in November. Also known as Movember because of the okay. moustache. So, uh, I shaved so I could start again. Well, you look like a whippersnapper. Oh, I'm not even sure what that is, but it, it <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> a confident young man. I like that. I like the sound of that. Yeah, <laughs> I can live with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be growing a beard uh, just to remind everybody about uh, prostate cancer. It's okay. real. Uh, well, I wish nice. you would shave it off after November. Uh, uh, thankfully, you look better without the beard. Thankfully, he uh, enjoys the uh, rascal look. <laughs> but thankfully, I. Don't really care what Nashit thinks about my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed you got no socks again this week. Yeah, yeah. Just goes with the look. Uh, well, actually, you know, since we're doing the summer thing, yeah. I've tried different versions of the summer thing. Yeah. I thought this week we would do a cocktail. All right. So we are going to try a wine cocktail known as a sangria, a popular Spanish drink that is made of... Uh, a red wine and fruit. It usually has a lot of sugar in it, but because Rufara and I are banting, we're having it sugar-free. We have put a little bit of extra fruit and we put a bit of berry juice in there, uh, but it's, it's still quite dry. Rufara is a bit skeptical. Uh, we'll see if he enjoys the whole episode <laughs> drinking it or whether he will revert to whiskey in the yeah. second segment. It looks like a pink drink. Well, you know, sometimes we can have pink drinks. Mm. What are you having? Um, a green tea, lemon and lime from the Caricho Gold uh, selection. Yet again, so, we're in East Africa. Yeah, but this is a green tea, so yeah, oh, it's different. So it's very different. It's very different. Uh, one day you're going to tell us what, what, what your connection is to that part of the world. I thought you were going to say one day we're going to go. Actually, to we, East should, Africa. we should. Actually. Yeah. yeah, I think so. It should be good fun when the skies are open. Maybe avoid these folks, yeah? The skies are open. Yeah, but there's all these COVID tests and, you know, it's annoying. Yeah. No, we should. We yeah, should. we should. We, we should. should. Anyway, uh, you're going to pour that. You're going you're gonna to taste it. Tell me what you think. Yeah, it is quite dry. Uh, I was like, uh, you know, it's not anywhere near as sweet as I thought, as it looks at all. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, and you should try it. I mean, it's fruit juice. <laughs> <laughs> With some wise right. water in it. <laughs> I'm not so sure you want that. <laughs> um, so, I mean, a lot of people in the city have been talking about the Monetary Policy Committee's statement recently. Uh, it had a lot in it, but maybe before we go into it, I think the average common man on the street has no idea who, who this Monetary Policy Committee is or why it's important that they're making statements. Hmm. Would you like to... Okay, so... In Zimbabwe, it's a, it's a new invention, and the idea elsewhere around the world is you have market players or market experts who the central bank um, decides, you know, it should form a body that decides on interest rate uh, and where the direction of the interest rate. The motivation is that market players get as many people as possible to be involved in monetary policy in a country so so that it's not necessarily uh, akin to just the technocrats at the central bank but also to market participants so that's really the motivation uh, where the monetary policy committee uh, comes from in other jurisdictions like america south africa uh, it's a very robust and very um, useful place but and and this is the caveat which i warn people it's uh it rules on a majority so it doesn't necessarily decide policy on the technical bit i think that 
informs the people who come onto that particular uh, platform. But they literally vote. So it's should we increase interest rate and they put their hand up. And if the majority put their hand up, then interest rate increases. So these guys came up with, I think, five or six resolutions mm -hmm. uh, after their meeting of 28 October. Yeah. Are these binding on the governor? Or yes, are they, they are. Or are they because because the, the governor sits in that uh, policy committee. Does he have um, to listen to them? Or can he go back to his office and... I think convention demands that he listens to them, but there's no constitutional requirement or law requirement that says you must follow the MPC. You know, why I'm, why I'm raising this um, is, so you've got the governor making monetary policy statements, mm -hmm. and you have the MPC meeting in between his statements and making resolutions. And then you have uh, some well, points of difference. For example, yeah. the governor says he's targeting reserve money growth of 20% per quarter, mm. and the MPC comes and says it should only be 10%. So who are we to listen to? Uh, brilliant, George. Uh, you know, huh. I think... You, you like my hairstyle? You think I'm brilliant? Well, you, know, you shaved, so I think some reason... <laughs> we can't see your hairstyle because you're But it's brilliant because these are, these are important questions. These are important <laughs> questions that we must ask, especially in a country like Zimbabwe. Uh, the MPC is not a statutory body. What is a statutory body? And I'm not a lawyer, so maybe lawyers can come in. But what we know, and because I did a bit of study in our new constitution and how the central bank is actually constituted uh, as in, by the 2013 uh, constitution. constitution. So there's no way where the MPC is. Uh, the MPC in Zimbabwe, as is, is more an advisory body. But I think so far, every action that they've taken, the central bank governor has followed through on that particular action. Recommendations. Recommendations. But in Zimbabwe, it's more an advisory body than it is a statutory body that has a, a legal impact. I'm amazed that you guys find any of this interesting. Because to me, what matters is what is the policy and is it getting the desired outcomes? But, but that's the point. that They, they made yeah. a policy pronouncement. Yeah, and we've seen well, since... It's, it's not even that. I'll, I'll tell you why we should be interested. Uh, right now, if you look at... And this is rabbit hole territory. But <laughs> huh. I, I you think even it's know when you're going to do rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he started it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but well, if you well, look at the... Who's <laughs> <laughs> Well, he started it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the seven-year-old. <laughs> um, but if you look at uh, the 2013 uh, Constitution, and that's why we, we should worry about these things, Mm -hmm. We should worry about these things because the 2013 constitution by the people of Zimbabwe left the enactment of uh, central, uh, central bank uh, legislation to uh, parliament, mm -hmm. and that hasn't been done. So we've got a few lines that constitute in our constitution, that constitute the RBZ, and then it sort of says, and as an act of parliament, our parliamentarians will then give us the legislation around. But we already have an RBZ Act. So they've, they've done their job. No, 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 they haven't. Our RBZ Act is pre-2013. So this is, I, I'm sure you've heard a lot of arguments around this, that we need to reconcile our constitutions with our acts, right? This is one particular one, where our constitution uh, says very little about the central bank. And what should have happened post-2013 is parliamentarians should have sat down. This sounds all then, very academic. What does it have to do no, with the price because of bread? It's, it's important because if you believe in the ideas of whether or not our, our central bank should be independent or not, it has to do with issues like uh, overdraft, government overdraft at the RBZ. Like I said, Zimbabwe is the only one with that unique proposition where the government literally has an overdraft to the central bank. Also, if you read the Fed, you, there's no one with a direct overdraft mm -hmm. with the central bank. So that's why the lawyers and the parliamentarians are the ones who should sit down and ensure that we have cleaned it up. And part of our mess, if you think about it, you know, the RBZ has a $5 billion hole mm -hmm. and they've been going out and they've been borrowing on our behalf. Part of that mess is because the legislation is just not clear enough. So yes, it has everything to do with the price of bread because we were not... Uh, as pedantic literally. as we should have been. Yes, literally, literally. affects the price of bread. We should have been but pedantic in the 2013 constitution. But we were not. 
So but, they get no, but, 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 okay, we, we, we're not going down a rabbit hole. Key questions. So these guys say interest rates must go up by 20 percentage points. To 60%. I think that's a very positive well, development. Interest rates are not moving to 60%. The mm. policy rate is moving to 60%. Mm -hmm. The overnight accommodation. Mm. So the banks will then price at a markup mm. to that. Yep. Or, Which or is positive because I think that we'll see real interest rates. Okay. So you think it's a good it's a good move? Yeah, but 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 yes. I also thought it was a good move um, for the official rate to move from 88 to 97. And I thought that they were good on a path to adjusting it and closing the gap between the official rate and the power market rate. But um, this week's auction was a big disappointment. It, it hardly moved. Right. So maybe if we... But, because, but was it the auction's fault? Was it the RBC's <laughs> fault or the, or the bidder's fault? <laughs> do, you think it's an, do you think we have legitimate bidders um, in our auction? Do you, if, you, if you put in a bid next week at 150, do you think we would even see it on the an, uh, announcement of uh, auction <laughs> well, results? Why don't you try? Um, so my reply to this is, uh, I think the two are very distinct and we need to make that distinction that the central bank should not be anywhere near the Forex market, which is quite different from the interest rate. I think the interest rate is actually positive. Now I'll tell you why it's positive and the Forex wait, 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 is not pause. positive. Yeah. Tinashe just said something the Reserve Bank did is positive. Oh yeah, I think it's the first thing that they've done in 10 years. Mark this moment. <laughs> When in we're 10 years. When we're growing up, this is when we say, Kuchanaya <laughs> Fant. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think uh, in 10 years, this is the first time that they've done something positive. And I'll tell you why it's positive and why the hullabaloo and everything they do in the forex market is never positive because that is not within their remit. Right? So uh, if I'm playing around in your home, mm -hmm. uh, never mind I'm <laughs> cleaning up the, your couch and whatever, I should never be in your house in the first place. And that is what the central bank has been doing in the forex market. But, with, but as far as as far as the monetary policy is concerned, this is actually what the constitution or the act of parliament, what the Reserve Bank Act actually says they must do. This is the first time in the last 10 years, or if you want, in the last 15 years, that the Reserve Bank has actually done something that they are supposed to do. Okay. That is why it's a positive thing. This he's, is actually he's, what they're supposed he's, he's to do. He's found a way to turn a positive thing into a negative thing. No, no. But okay. I, I'm, All right. I'm, so, I'm saying it's so, a positive so, so, thing. So, so, so you but do you think, do you think, okay, do you think, no, we're not going down a rabbit hole. I, increase in interest rates, positive. Yes. They've also said they're going to increase statutory reserves. Statutory reserves is the minimum amount of money a bank must keep at the reserve bank. They, they're raising that. Well, they're doubling it, but it's only going up. I, I, that one is, a, is, it's meaningless. It won't have a, a, a big impact on the, on the on the market why but it's gonna i mean it's gonna suck out because wow well, remember already if you look at the reserve money uh, already a lot of banks had more than the statutory reserve at the central bank anyway so it's academic yeah it's academic um speaking of reserve money they've said that we must reduce the target from the 20 percent that jpm has been talking about to 10 percent mm. is that positive and what's the distinction between money, reserve money, broad money? Well, 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 well like, like when, when they make an announcement like that, it's, it's like, you know, um, announcing your wishes. You know, yeah, they, they wish inflation uh, end of next year will be single digits. They wish that there will be robust economic growth. They wish that reserve no, but, but, money is going to come. But it's a positive. Well, yeah. You've just said the increase in interest rates, which is a wish as well. No, no, no. That, that, that they've actually done. That's very different from No, wishing. they haven't done it yet. It's, it's a recommendation. No, that they've announced no, that they're they've going to do it. They, they've done that. Yeah. So okay. it's very uh, different from wishing. But reduction, okay. But they, there's a wish to reduce, uh, or to change the target. So they're changing the target from 20 to Yeah, 20. These are, they're changing their wishes. I, I agree with Rufaro. And I'm surprised that Rufaro didn't want to have the earlier <laughs> debate, right, on what the Constitution and what the Act of Parliament says. If our law was tight enough, then it wouldn't be wishes. It would actually be real mm -hmm. that there's a, a certain level of money, uh, growth in money that they can only, they are allowed to increase by and beyond which they need to go back to parliament or they need to have, to, to have a new law passed so that they can increase that. Whereas right now is just purely a wish. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I mean, where I was hoping you guys would go. And our wishes in reality, just to be clear over the last 15, 20 years, um, existing 
different yeah. universes. But but where I was There's hoping, you, where I was hoping you, you guys would go with the discussion mm -hmm. is even a ten percent per quarter. It's uh, too much because I mean you can compound. Yeah. What's ten compounded four times? I have no idea. Well, I've last week you last week you showed I think it's around fifty six percent or so. So you it's still outside the targeted inflation. Um, let's be very clear. Reserve money should be at zero percent. So, uh, all you guys are in management and you know this, that any target must be smart, so it must be measurable, it must be benchmarking. So the first question you must ask the central bank is, when they say reserve money is growing at 10% or 20% or 50%, you must ask them, what's the benchmark? And the benchmark should be 0%. Reserve money should not be growing at all. That's what the benchmark is. What is reserve money? So. Reserve money is, so the technical bit is that's, um, I think we discussed it some time, that's the base money, and then you have money supply. So you have what they call uh, M0, which is the base currency. This is the actual currency that's been issued in the economy, your notes on coins, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then beyond that, you have your M1, your M2, your M3. So them making the distinction, they argue it's, that's what we are in control over the actual so, so bank balances the actual coin yeah bank balances but you know that they've actually been limiting the amount of uh, notes on coins why primarily. do we actually bother with notes and coins in this market well it remember, me. remember the bank because a lot lots of people still use notes and coins yeah but and uh, they're limited mobile to money a, is you a 50 dollar a 50 no, but are you saying notes and coins are equal to reserve money surely not surely reserve money is plus Plus bank balances. Plus bank balances. Okay. But what they're saying is what we have control over are the notes and coins. Central bank. Okay, sorry. You, you are confusing me and I'm sure you're confusing me. Okay. The question is, what's reserve money? Notes and coins, then plus bank balances sitting with the banks. So, so, the, so they're saying bank balances, the total bank balances. And should, notes and coins. And notes and coins yeah. should grow by no more than 10%. Exactly. And you're saying... Well, why should they grow? But inevitably, they will grow as, as money is circulating, right? No, that's velocity of money. And that will more likely affect your M3. And that's why we're more interested in M3 than we are in okay, M3. Okay, I think we're going into a rabbit hole. Okay, so what we're saying is banks create money, mm -hmm. right? And what the central bank is saying is, I'm going to be very narrow in my definition of... Okay, so let me give you an example. What is this? No idea. Oh, a cocktail. Okay, your cocktail, right? It's the Reserve Bank... Yeah. It's got a sangria. Sangria. Okay. So the Reserve Bank is saying in this sangria, what we are concerned with are the lemon, the lemons, just the lemons. Everything else we don't care. Never mind, it's still part of a sangria, but we're not concerned with that. And what we are saying is we're going to we're going to add lemons, 10% of lemons every quarter, or 20%, whatever it is. But we're just so concerned. It's going, to, it's going to become very bitter. Exactly. That's and a what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I'm saying is, as far as we're concerned as the market, we're concerned with the total sangria, what's in the total sangria. And we're also saying that actually lemons, as far as we're concerned, should actually be fixed. The growth of the amount of lemons in this in a year should, should be, be zero. Should be zero. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any notes and coins, and I think that's where you're getting confused. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any lemons in your sangria. But I'm just saying, at the beginning of the year, the minute you have your sangrias, the minute you have your lemons in your sangria, that's it. No more growth in lemons. I think this is a good point to take a break. We will be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. And so before we went away, you were lecturing us on the different kinds of money. I'm not going to let you go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but um, I'm just reminded, uh, the last few days, as you may be aware, I've been at the Pension Fund Conference, and there's been a lot of talk about savings, because mm -hmm. the country basically has none. Um, so where do savings fit in all of this? Okay, so uh, savings would be part of our deposits. 
So this part will be of part of uh, no, M1. And reserve money is M? M0. M0. Yeah. Okay. So are those great? Well, so they are savings that we term part of our deposits, but then they are savings in the national economy. Mm -hmm. what, what is actually happening in our savings in the national economy? Mm -hmm. So I think the ones that you are talking about is in the national economy. And in the national economy, what they do is they look at our consumption level. So they look at our income levels mm -hmm. and income levels or your income. There are two things you do with your income. It's either you save or you consume. But if your consumption is higher than your income, it means that your savings are negative. Mm -hmm. That's clear enough, right? Yeah. So what has actually happened over the last 20 years is our savings. We've actually been consuming more and our savings have actually been negative. And the, this the, happened... The, the country has had negative savings. For the for, last 20 years. For the last 20 years. For the last 20 Without years. Without exception? Well, you have 2018, I think that's where you had uh, an exception. But that's more, more has to do with the one-to-one -one gadget than it being real. But I think over the last 20 years, without exception, our savings so, rate on an annual basis have actually been far less. So we've had this discussion before uh, where we've said savings equals investment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Correct. So you say we've had negative investment. We've had negative investments over the last 20 years. What does that mean? I mean, exp explain that to my mother. Okay, so we are consuming, we are borrowing and we're consuming. So we're consuming what we're borrowing and we are not producing enough and we're not, we don't have enough income. So we've got high borrowings, but we don't have enough income. So not enough people are earning an income and, but we are still, whatever we're borrowing from outside, we're consuming it. And that has been happening over the last 20 years. And I think it started with the land reform. I think when we decimated our land tenure system, which is really what I'm more worried about, is we don't have title. That's capital that moved from whatever value to zero. Is and, it, and what, isn't it more important that uh, what happened since we enacted land reform is that we've been importing at least a million tons of maize, which we didn't do per annum before land reform? Not necessarily. Um, I could say if we were importing what we were, what income we had. Mm -hmm. So if we were just importing uh, because we had X amount of income, then our savings rate would just be zero. It wouldn't be negative. It's negative is because we are actually borrowing to import maize and to consume maize. And so the, that's why the savings. And this is why. Negative. And this is why twice over the last. 20 years, we've had to nationalize RBZ debt. Absolutely. Because we've, we've borrowed money from the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, people, individual players, and sometimes the government has borrowed money from individual You're players. Roll. You're on a roll. And so. this is crystallized on the RBZ's balance sheet. Exactly. And then we've had to say to them, sorry, we can't pay you. We'll give you TBs. Go talk to the Ministry of Finance. One day they'll give you money. Exactly. So... And going back to our debate last week, where we're saying we, we are hung up on talking about surpluses and we leave the problem at the central bank. And then every once every 10 years or decade, we get into the scenario where we're like, oh, OK, now we can't pay uh, cent um, uh, Treasury. Can you please take over the debt? And this is, has been happening continuously. So if we were just true to ourselves, then we would import only up to the level of our income, whatever well, well, we, we well, well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't consume up to the level of our income because the other part of it, um, Sinashe, mm. is why do we have bad roads now? Why is the national grid in, a, in, in the state that it's in? When I was in Yanga the last three days, the power was on and off five or six times a day mm. uh, because of the bad weather. But that's telling you the state of the national grid because mm. we're not investing in it. We're not investing in our roads. We're not investing in our sewer systems and our water systems. And where would those investments come from? They would have come from? Savings. Savings. Mm. And if we're consuming everything, we, we end up without infrastructure. When was the last time you saw a crane in Harare CBD? You, you know, I mean, you guys have taught me this idea or this notion of things being less bad. Things are bad, but they're less bad. I didn't know it. I didn't understand <laughs> that concept. So I was just borrowing your term. 
that uh, savings of zero are less bad than Neg negatives. negatives. Savings. That's all I was saying. But you are quite correct that even savings of zero still have a huge impact because what it just means is you're not investing in infrastructure, you're not investing in businesses, you're not investing in the actual production in the economy. Yeah, it's, it's, well, we've rehabilitated 20,000 kilometers of roads, uh, apparently. 20,000? Uh, yep. Um, that was in the news. Uh, that, that, although the question is, um, how did we fund it? And um, and what does rehabilitation mean? Mm. Yeah. No, fixing. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 outside my office, there's a guy, there's a city of Harare truck that's just gone past putting gravel in bottles. Okay. <laughs> is that rehabilitation? <laughs> Oh, look, it's better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's less bad. Um, but, you, you know, I, uh, uh, the other week when I wasn't here, I drove around the country. I went to a lot of small towns. And mm. one thing that I noticed in quite a few of the secondary towns in this country, the likes of Kwe Kwe, Mashingo, uh, Shinoya, and so on, there's a golden era in the architecture in the 90s. You, you see that quite a few tall buildings came up in the 90s. And you can identify them. They were owned by the... Uh, insurance companies, and you can you can see the architectures late mm -hmm. 80s to mid 90s. Then it stopped. Mm -hmm. Nothing's been built in those towns yeah. since the mid 90s. Yeah. And at this pension fund conference, we've seen that the pension fund industry has been declining for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So did you fix it? Did you guys resolve? The issues in the no, 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 You just had a good time. <laughs> <Talk show. laughs> we, yeah. we were there. Did a lot of talking. We were there. Loving, we were there to have parties. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, look, and and maybe if we have time later on in the show, we'll talk about it. There were some important discussions that happened there. I think uh, the industry is concerned, uh, if only for survivalist reasons. They're concerned that the status quo cannot be sustained. No, it cannot be. It cannot be. Remember China, you know, I mean, we look at China seriously, right? China has grown because of a savings rate of 45% to GDP. They spend half of what they earn. Yes. Right. And that's the engine for growth. If you look at all the countries that have grown, a country can only grow because of its savings rate. Because that's where your investment comes from. If it does not have savings, uh, I'm afraid that you're not growing. And it comes out in the numbers. Uh, GDP since 1980 has grown from 6.6 .6 billion to now it's uh, 16 billion. That's the state. That's a we're lot of growth. In 40 no. years. So we've almost tripled. In 40 well, years. Didn't we rebase our GDP to 25 billion? Uh, no, no. Forget about that. <laughs> you don't believe that 25 billion? You don't no, no, no. Even truly, he went back to 18 billion. It was not believable. It was not sustainable. It was unreal. What, yeah. what have countries like Kenya done? Well, in 1990, Kenya was smaller than Zim. And then Kenya is now a $100 billion economy. And wow. we're a $16 billion economy. And I, I, I must say this. Kenya has not done anything phenomenal. Kenya is still a corrupt nation. Kenya does not have any natural resources to speak of well they've gold they've got a coast they do have some no, they don't have gold gold no they've got tanzania they've got tanzania and drc's gold <laughs> <laughs> it's tourism so their biggest export is actually tourism um and no, services, i actually think zim services uh, still industry. generates more uh hard currency than kenya per capita zim uh, no, they, exports a whole lot more than the not even not even per capita in, in absolute yeah. terms we are about the same level as kenya we are above Kenya, in, ab in absolute terms. Um, and yet but, we but have then, foreign currency issues and they don't. Yeah, precisely. Um, but also I think that uh, we're just fixated on export. Like you as a business, do you care whether your dollar is coming from the local domestic market or it's coming from Bangladesh? I shouldn't. You shouldn't, right? But yeah. in Zimbabwe, we become so fixated with that notion that, ooh, we, look at us. You know, we export more than everyone else. Well, at the end of the day, you're also importing more than everyone else. At the end of the day, your exports are not actually helping you grow the economy because what's happening is your policy is skewed. Um, there's, there are a lot of policy inconsistencies that then destroy your industrial base. 
So there's a whole lot. Uh, they don't have a Forex auction market. They don't have our Forex uh, issues. But I think it's, I use Kenya as an example continuously because Kenya has not done anything phenomenal. They've had political problems. They've had violence in their elections. They're a you know, corrupt nation. Um, I mean, I think it was 1.2 euro bond money that just disappeared. Yeah, 1.2 billion dollars? Billion dollars. It's just, it just disappeared. Wow. And they could not account for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it happened in Mozambique too. I mean, you know, we're Africans. <laughs> these things happen. Yeah, exactly. So the question is, look at uh, all these countries have been going, growing. What is it? Um, and I, I, I posted something that I thought we would discuss. It's... The last 20 years, so you like positive news about Zambia? Yes. Okay, so let me Everybody tell you. likes positive news except Okay, you. so let, let, me, let me tell you something that's very have positive. You, have you noticed he's got the same glasses as John Robertson? No, not exactly, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the problem with this, uh, uh, not fashion savvy individuals. No, carry on. When carry they look on. at glasses, they're all the same. No, carry on. Carry on with your point. Thick, thick <laughs> rims, they're all the same. They're not the same. Um, so the point I was trying to make is uh, if you look at um, certain countries or what has happened, the positive news about Zimbabwe is that over the last 20 years, I, I did a, just a, a cursory study of African countries and why they were growing, right? Because I started with Kenya, just trying to understand Kenya. And then I started to understand all the other African countries and trying to really pin it down to one thing. If there was one thing that they've done over the last 20 years, what was it? If you look at Nigeria, Ghana, Mozambique, Tanzania, you know, all these countries, and it's debt forgiveness. That since 2000, the number one, remember in 2002, the economist, May economist of 2002, said Africa was the hopeless continent. Yep. You remember that? And uh, 10 years later, later, Africa rising. Africa rising, hopeful. Well, first it was the hopeful. Continent. continent and then 10 years later or six years later it's africa rising mm -hmm. and the single if you were to attribute it to one single thing mm -hmm. obviously i'm being deductionist and reducing it to one thing there's a whole lot of other things in that helped in the bouquet but i would say it's debt forgiveness so in nigeria had a 70 percent Debt forgiveness. Ghana had fifty six percent debt yeah, forgiveness. Yeah, but Mugabe, he, he disagreed with uh, but, but, the, the, the hip program. He, yeah, he, he he was of the view that we're not poor. So, no, no, I'm, I'm no, bringing I, out something that's but, positive. But, that Zim has not enjoyed, has not enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. But I, th I that, think I think that's where the potential is. But I think there's something in what you're both saying, which is it's not, and you you've touched on it that it's not just the debt forgiveness. Yes. And you've got to ask yourself why we refuse to go under HIPIC. Mm -hmm. Because when, if it wasn't a country and we were, it was a company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was highly indebted, what do we do? We restructure it. Mm -hmm. So in the restructuring, there's, a, there's some debt forgiveness, but there's also a change in management. There's a, you've got to stop behaving badly. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do the other. And if you actually take... Well, we're the, addicted to bad fiscal behavior, mm -hmm. bad monetary uh, behavior. So um, we couldn't get off. So that's why we said no. Yeah, I think what George is saying is what comes with the debt forgiveness is what we were not willing to do. Willing and to do. and that's, what actually get, that's what actually gets you out of the mess. It's not the stroke of a pen that says you've got no more debt because you're you, can, you can acquire correct. some more tomorrow. Absolutely correct. Yeah. But it's, you've got no more debt on condition that you, you do start these, doing things. these things. And if but, you, but if you, if so you, that's if, if there's one thing, why are you betting on Zimbabwe? There's one thing that you're betting on in Zimbabwe. Uh, it's so basically, we chose to go to jail instead of the rehabilitation center. Yes. <laughs> no, no, we, no, 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 no. We, we opted for neither. We just said we're not going to pay. Well, that no, is we, jail. We take that's jail. That's what he's saying. Um, maximum prison because <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is well. Uh, we should we should stop here and uh, take a bit of a break. I think you need to powder your nose. It's looking a bit shiny. Thank you, George. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, 
this segment, I thought it would be good for us to just uh, touch on a few comments that we've been getting from uh, some of our viewers on social media. And maybe we'll comment on one or two of them. Sure. But Sounds good. We, but before we get to that, you thought that uh, this wasn't very nice stuff. But I see we're, oh, at, the, yeah. we're at the bottom of the, of the picture. <laughs> it's almost yeah. done. Yeah, well, look, um, it's not... It's like, like, like Chinash has embraced this concept of uh, <laughs> less bad being better than bad. That like, yeah, I think I can drink this. I was humoring <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's, 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 look, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, I think that's the closest I'll ever get to a compliment from you. Um, mm. So just going through some of the comments. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, Razor Man Nice say, uh, if you want to be powerful in a democracy, start a business. If you want to be powerful in the alternative to democracy, become a politician. I agree. I beg to differ. I think, look, let's look at China, for example, right? Yes, the politicians, they are very powerful, but don't you think a lot of the entrepreneurial billionaire class there is also quite powerful? In fact, they might actually be more powerful because their power transcends the borders of the country. Uh, through the benevolence of? I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sold on that. I think that... Try Russia. Um... Yeah, but even if you look at Russia, right? If you look at people like Abramovich, they made billions of dollars. They moved to the UK, and they are powerful on the global stage, irrespective. Like if if the entire so Russian they, government, why, why don't they stick around in Russia? Okay, rabbit hole alert. Another <laughs> comment. Uh, Tatenda Mutle. Great show, very informative, but I think we need a separate show on Zim sanctions and their impact on the economy. Yeah, well, look, I I I don't know what that there's much to speak to there. I, um, I think Tinashe gave a very good example of countries that have been under sanctions for decades that have enjoyed economic growth. I mean, albeit, you know, um, not it ideal. George. It was George. Yeah, oh. Nobody uh, ever remembers me. <laughs> well, yeah, look, you, you make much less interesting contributions than Tinashe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but, but, like, oh, uh, and that's yeah. why you should remember when I do make an interview. Oh. Um, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I'll try harder, I promise. Um, but like, if you look at North Korea, right? Okay, fine. Compared to South Korea, the performance over the last 40, 50 Short years yeah. is abysmal. I mean, you know, but they've been under sanctions and they've actually grown the economy, you know. Uh, whereas we, over the last 20 years, you know, I think there's a interesting and remarkable statistics, st statistic about Zim between 1998 and 2008. Uh, we lost 40% of our GDP in real terms, which is, you know... The worst, which, the worst performance of any country. Not at war, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you know, we, 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 yeah. we are winning um, all the wrong kind of prizes. You know, there's... <laughs> there's okay. okay, we need to move on. Uh, Ian Banda, this show should be longer, at least two hours. And I know what you I'm think. not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I, I think, you know, um, there's enough material... For the show to be longer sometimes uh, you perhaps be once in a while we can indulge uh, um, the viewers who prefer the longer version and uh yeah we'll drink something yeah if we're drinking um george's cox cocktails <laughs> i'll be lucid for us t muchine uta i loved rufaro's question on our vision as a nation clearly we need a philosophy that guides us as people and it appears we do not have one my humble request to the producer and the team is that we have a rabbit hole on this. I, I think it'll be an interesting one. We should do one. Yeah, because on because vision, because yeah. because if you think about our 2030, um, well, you know what we have on paper in terms of our vision to take our country forward, it's not awe-inspiring. It's it's pedestrian. Uh, it's mediocre. <laughs> um, you know why are we not thinking bigger? You know, well, especially. You know, Next week, we're going to be at the CZI Congress. So it'll be interesting to hear what our business leaders think about our vision. Yes, I think a lot of them will actually uh, ha have some choice words for you, given that you've accused our business people of being inward looking. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think this is, I think this is a good idea. Um, if you come into CZI, we're going to have a couple of booths there. Uh, and uh, watch out for us. We'll try and pull some of you into the booth and ask you what your 100 billion or $1 trillion economy vision for this country is. Mm. I think that might make some interesting... Uh, it will, it will. 
Bernard Mukwaira. I don't like this, but I think you guys will love it. Excellent show, chaps. Really liked the rabbit hole on political philosophy. <laughs> They're considering another one. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Because uh, it's, it's it's actually a point of disagreement, so it'll be lovely to Can actually... I finish reading what Bernard said? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Tinashe's engagement with the Hobbes Leviathan was interesting. Also liked the reference to Dante. Perhaps there should be a rabbit hole episode on political philosophy. What do you think? Absolutely. It's in the making. So watch this, that, that will watch happen. This space. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um... Who's this? Abraham Nyatsanza. So with the budget of $3 trillion, soon we'll be in the quintillions, eh? That's sad. Yeah. I, I think perhaps you need to dig a bit into that. The budget is not $3 trillion. Well, yeah. the, that's uh, what the ministries the, are The saying. line ministries, that's what they want. That's right? It, it hasn't been finalized yet. But mm -hmm. the, the, the very fact that they're having that conversation and they're discussing trillions must be <laughs> ominous. It's, it's cause for concern. You know, in itself. Like, well, you know. like Mutuli said, forget about trillions. We are on 900 trillion. <laughs> 0, 0,9 trillion, not a trillion. Yes, but 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 I think it's still cause for concern. And even if you look at the 900 billion and round you compare it, it to last year. Well, just, I mean, ask, just ask George to round it up. Yeah, what is 900 billion if you were to round it up, up to the nearest trillion? <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to answer that question. Uh, <laughs> Fibian Chiwengwa. Great show as always. Asa asa karamba marabe to home diani. Atina kumbu kumbu maramba isu. Atina fudi kumbu to one hour fifteen, one hour twenty. In one of the episodes will be bad. That will be George. This is George. <laughs> I have no issues with rabbit holes. It's, this is George Yard. Yeah, so maybe you can address that, seeing as mm -hmm. you are the culprit. And Ranga. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We we think uh, the current length between forty-five minutes and an hour is manageable for filming purposes. Uh, considering that you are not treating the alcohol as a prop. <laughs> <laughs> the alcohol was never meant to be a prop. This is Ranga's um, delusion about this show that, uh, you know, this is actually our reality. It drinks without alcohol. Well, I mean, geez. <laughs> so, so we'll keep it at then that. We, but uh, as you've seen in this season, we've uh, played around with different formats, with uh, bonus episodes that seem to be gathering momentum as uh, hangover episodes. Uh, maybe in the next season, you'll see a lot more of those. Uh, and maybe we'll also break up the, the episodes with more interesting content, which might enable us to lengthen it a bit more. Uh, Tinashe is trying to convince Ranga to play around with other formats uh, on other social media, other than YouTube and Facebook, where we might be able to put up more content in shorter formats. Yeah. <laughs> is that you trying to say in a very lengthy and convoluted way, TikTok? <laughs> Well, there's TikTok, there's Instagram. Yeah. But uh, so the, the three of us could use your uh, lobbying with our producer if you think it's a great idea. Um, so the, again, this you guys will find very interesting, but I won't let you go into the rabbit hole because we talked about this last week. This is uh, Wei Chikoko Ko. Government plays a big role in creating conducive environments. I feel like he's adulterating people's names. No, no, it's Chikoko Ko. <laughs> our, our government like our government likes controlling everything, but I think it would be better if they adopt the social capitalism system like South Korea. Don't know about social capitalism, but I like, certainly yeah, believe those in capitalism. Those two words don't belong together at all. Social yeah. and capitalism, like, I, 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 mm. it vexes me. And I think that uh, you know you've articulated this before quite uh, quite succinctly that you know. Um, when you look at countries like Scandinavia or you know, European countries and uh, even South Korea where you know, they've got free healthcare, free education, you see, it doesn't actually mean that these are smart policies, right? They're rich enough to do dumb things mm -hmm. and they get away with it. And so when we look at it, we shouldn't actually aspire to that, especially yeah. coming from a place where we can't actually afford it. True. Okay. Uh, my favorite comment, this is... Uh, the obviously said something nice about George. Mm. The point George makes about an exception <laughs> in Zimbabwe is a major marker for someone lying mm. and breaking the social contract to the benefit of themselves. I think he's referring to something we discussed last week, where we always think that Zimbabwe is special. Yeah. The rules don't apply to us. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a Zimbabwean problem. It's an African problem. I, I, you know, I've always, or for, rather not always, for the longest time, thought that um, we have a problem in this part of the world of taking ourselves too seriously. Too seriously, yeah. yeah. You know, I agree. Um, we, we want a seat on the UN Security Council. We want this. <laughs> but, but you guys laugh, but, you know, there's one billion plus of us on this continent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, one point four. It's it's in terms of land masses. Okay, it's, 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 good. The, it's the still, second. It's still, it's still part of the continent, right? Okay. It's the second largest uh, continent on the planet. We have the most arable land. We have, we're incredibly well endowed in terms of natural resources and minerals. Thank you. Right. For mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that last bit. And and yet we contribute less than three percent to global GDP. Mm. Right, so we're not serious. So, no, notwithstanding that, same, we want to put same, our hand same up GDP there. as Italy, just to give you perspective. Oh, yeah, the all whole of us. continent, same right? GDP as Italy, and, and, and Italy is the sick man of Europe. Yeah, it, 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 and we, we want to jump up and down. And and you know what, we were so not serious that there's 54, you know, sovereign nations with their own governments, prime ministers, 3,000 tribes. <sighs> well, you know, you know, what's up? Has tribes. But, okay. And 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 and. The borders were drawn uh, at a conference in Berlin in 1884 by, by old white men. We had never and been here. To this day, we still take them seriously. Mm. You know, but no. okay, we've got to move on. Uh, I love this one from last week, and I think at this point you must just eat humble pie. Munya mushanga jige, Rufaro, you are reading too much into the auction rate movement. RBZ is just moving the fixed rate. It does not mean RBZ has moved away from fixed rate. Yeah, I'll, so, so I'll, just, I'll, just I'll nicely that. chow that I'm okay. <laughs> I, I honestly thought that, that you know there was there, there wasn't a, <laughs> for a moment there. I thought you were paid. But alas, um, I have egg on my face. <laughs> Who was that? That's a very uh, good comment. Munya Mushagajike. All right. Well done, Munya. <laughs> I don't think Rufaro is going to let you win the whiskey book. <laughs> <laughs> he should. <laughs> um, interesting. Uh, Econometer Global Capital. Uh, so there's no name. It's just a handle. That's Chris. Chris. Mukaga. Oh, right. It will assist if that someone, okay, I'm not sure which someone, has attended the meetings. Oh, so I think he's referring to the ZNCC hmm. meetings. Uh, I believe private sector has robustly engaged government, even on presumably sensitive issues. Maybe some prefer megaphone diplomacy. I think that's one for you. Eh? Yeah, look, I think, you know, and, and, and I think we had a, a, a little tiff on this, where I think that our business community here is um, doesn't speak truth to power. Um, mm. And it's not that um, they don't have the capacity or that they wouldn't be taken seriously if they actually articulated themselves more um, assertively. It's the, I think they make a deliberate and incorrect uh, choice to be meek and diplomatic. I think the conversation we had with um, Sekai, the way she explained it is what has happened is uh, post-1990, and I think uh, John Robertson on... Um, on one of the shows actually commented on this, that post-1990 business sort of reacts to pain. And I think that was Sekai's argument, that when you see business position, it's we're always reactive. We're reactive, but we're not reactive to policy. We're reactive to pain. We're under you know, heavy rock or something under the you know, firing squad, and then you're sort of pleading to government to say, you know what, don't kill us all, or don't, please don't do this. Uh, this is post the fact. Begging for mercy. Begging for mercy. And I think that's part of the problem, that uh, business actually needs to have a proactive vision and structure and articulate it, not necessarily just to the policymakers, but actually to uh, the entire society, so that the entire society is very clear. And I think she intimated that, you know, you look at labor. Labor, uh, well... I suppose okay. pre two thousand, she was very. We're not going into election. Okay, labor has been very articulate in what they want, but business has not been that articulate in with one voice. And in my opinion, labor gets far too much of what they want in this part of the world. Okay, this is a rabbit hole. I agree. Chris is your friend. Please engage him. Okay. You can begin your engagement with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one. I love this one. I'm a big. So this is Uncle Bobby. 
uh, at Brian Kuzi. I'm a big fan of your show. Ranga, you did a good job. But we miss George. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully one day there will be an open Q and A forum. Certainly, I, th I think at the Caesar I we're quite interested in hearing uh, or in headbutting with the uh, business leaders. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Stop scaring the business leaders. <laughs> but but um, I mean, uh, look as we wind up the show. Perhaps as you comment on this week's show, uh, we we we're going to see ZI as uh, Chinasha said. We're going to be talking to a lot of. Uh, business leaders. Hopefully we'll get some of them to actually uh, stand in front of the camera. But it'll be very useful to have some comments you'd like us to put to these leaders in, in industry. Uh, this is the main conference in the country for leaders in manufacturing. So no, actually not in manufacturing. In it's everybody. It's every business sector. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I, I stand corrected. I'm, yeah. I'm learning something even before I go. Yeah. Uh, I think Sekai was kind enough to give us the lecture. With the tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did the tea work out for you? It was okay, actually. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. You me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lots yeah. of people had uh, interesting anecdotes or tidbits to say about it eh, on Twitter. Really? Yeah. Well, thank you for coming along. Uh, as, as I said, please continue engaging. Uh, engage with us particularly on YouTube, if you'd like a chance to win our book on whiskey. Uh, but we love getting your comments on all other platforms. In this particular week, we're looking forward to your comments and your questions for industry leaders at CZI Conference. Otherwise, um, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. COVID is real. Be good. If you can't be good, be good at it. <laughs> <laughs>